Hello everyone, this is the eighth session uh, of our UCAS How To on YouTube. Um, this time, having talked about the opening of personal statements last week, I'm going to talk about the middle and the end of them and what to do with the rest of them. Okay? Just a quick reminder of what the personal statement is and should look like. Um, it's 4,000 characters with spaces, which is the maximum. Okay? Um, and it's about you, why you're applying for the course, why you'd be good at it. Um, and the experiences and uh, skills you have that will make you a good candidate for that course. So that an admissions tutor who has loads and loads of people with all similar grades in front of them will be able to choose who they want to teach. And you are trying to show yourself as somebody that they would want to teach. Okay. So it is an opportunity, not a threat. OK, you must not see this as a, a hurdle to get over. Um, it's an opportunity to show who you are to a person who's never met you and is only out of seeing numbers and letters in terms of your predicted grades and your GCSE grades. You're trying to show something of who you are. It's your opportunity to do that. OK, you're explaining to them why you want to do that subject, why you'd be good at it, what your future ambitions are. Um, Remember, these people, these admissions students will only have your GCSE grades and your predicted A-level grades to go on to choose you from. This is an opportunity uh, for you to level up maybe with people who've got higher grades than you um, and to show that you're somebody who is deserving of a place on these courses. So you should be covering just what I said last week, but in this PowerPoint, we're going to have a look at the, the middle three parts. So skills and knowledge that your A-levels have given you that will make you a good candidate, um, any work experiences or courses or achievements that are relevant, and the things you do enjoy doing away from school. Hopefully, from what I explained to you last week, you've already opened with a paragraph explaining why you want to do the subject. Just a reminder of the overall structure, the opening, which we looked at last week. We're now looking at these parts. So a section explaining why you're suitable for the course and academic experiences and skills that you've got that make you suitable. We're going to be looking at all the relevant experience, such as your work experience, projects you've done, courses you've been on and things like that. And then what you enjoy doing out of school, sports, clubs, uh, hobbies, things like that, that show you as a rounded person. Remember that universities want students who are going to engage in student life and going to engage in their societies and their clubs um, and add more value to the university than just as a, a basic student um, doing academic work. And then your, your final ending we'll discuss as well. So you've done your punchy opening. You've explained why you're passionate about the subject. You've explained the origins of why you want to do it. Um, you've explained why you want to spend your career in this subject. What do you do now? What is the main body of the personal statement and the, and the middle part? So the next few ideas are some of the things you might choose to write in the middle section. So you could, for instance, explain what you've been good at in your subjects at school and how the other subjects you've done have given you relevant skills. That would be very valid as your middle section. Or you can talk about your own experiences for your subject outside of school, so the things you do at home. And this is particularly relevant if you're applying for things like engineering uh, or computer science, where you can talk at length about programs or, or things you've built or engineering projects you've done at home. But also things like law, if you've been quite politically active OK, things like that could be very relevant for things like law or history or politics. So you might want to talk about things like that. Alternatively, you could discuss a specific topic or issue within your subject that you're really interested in. So take a, something in your subject that is very current affairs um, and very much in the news at the moment. Or take um, something from your subject um, which is very topical. So a lot of students will perhaps talk about things like renewable energy or their interest in um, uh, the origin of the universe for physics and things like that, a specific issue that you're very interested in and want to explore further. You should also absolutely, whichever of these three you choose, 
okay, you should talk about any work experience or other experiences outside of your regular lessons that you do. Like you absolutely should do that. Um, and you should also talk about hobbies or sports or interests that you have. And there's two things you absolutely should do. So idea one for your middle section will be to explain what you've been really good at in your subject and how your other subjects have given you relevant skills so um, talk about the subject that is closest to what you're planning to do at university and literally talk through some of the things you found most interesting and some of the things you've been particularly good at your teachers will do this for you as well in your reference but there's nothing wrong with you talking about what you feel you've taken from those subjects in terms of skills so that might be uh, lab skills, research skills, um, it might be arguing skills, um, certainly if you're applying for engineering you should talk in detail about some of the machines that you've got proficiency in, so um, the milling machines, 3D printers and things like that, you should absolutely talk about your proficiency in those. Um, just have a read below of the example, this is a, an example from a personal statement um, from a student who went down this road for their middle section um, and looked at all their subjects and the, the skills um, that that student was able to pick out that those subjects had given her that were relevant. Okay, another idea for the middle section would be to talk about your own experiences of your subject outside of school so the things you do at home so good examples of this would be if you've helped with a parent's business um, which some people do if you've built computers at home or software at home if you've fixed cars or uh, done uh, sort of family engineering projects at home if you've built things taken things apart that sort of thing they, they are all really good examples any personal projects that you've um, done at home that you've got an interest in, any groups that you're part of where you've done that you've done work for that um, you've built something or designed something, all of these things would be relevant. If you've got involved in politics um, or or movements such as you know the the, the wildlife fund or um, the Model UN or all sorts of things like that. Anything like that would be really, really good. Any volunteering work you've done. We've, we've had students who've done quite extensive uh, translation work for the local hospital. Um, we've had students who teach uh, their language or teach uh, religion to other young people. Um, we've had students who volunteer at their local brownies group and all of those are absolutely fantastic. Just below is another example from a personal statement um, that gives an, just an example of one of these. A third thing that you could potentially choose to talk about for your middle section would be a specific topic or uh, within your subject area that you're very interested in. Um, and this is what people tend to do for um, very high level applications such as Oxford and Cambridge. And it could be any aspect within your subject that you're particularly interested in. So I've seen people talk about string theory for applying for physics. Um, for history, we've had students talk about, uh, uh, do a cross-curricular thing with psychology, talk about the psychology behind dictators. There's lots of things you can do for law as well. I've seen people for engineering applications talk about um, future advancements in engineering and or computer science that they're very excited about and they want to be a part of. Um, if you can refer to any sort of current or, or emerging research trends um, and, and how those things have changed over time or how those things are changing now and are going to shape the future, that would be a really effective middle section. Um, things that you absolutely should include are any relevant work experience or other experiences outside of your regular lessons and this is going to be very personal to you um, and I understand that for many of you this is quite difficult because of lockdown you may not have, have joined all the schemes that you might have done otherwise but anything you have done will be valuable so such as QMC volunteering if you volunteered at the QMC before the lockdown that would absolutely be relevant any courses you've done here so um, 
the senior maths challenge, the public speaking course here, the Vex Robotics, or D of E at your old school, any of those things really should go in your personal statement. They are relevant and they're important. Um, if you're taking part in any master classes, such as those at University of Nottingham, um, that would be worth talking about as well. If you've done any workshops or school trips, such as those of you who went to see the uh, the flying car, that sort of thing, um, that would be relevant. The, the students traditionally, when they've been on the China trip, would talk about that. And, and I'm really sorry that you won't be able to do that this year. But anything like that, if you have done any foreign travel, any sort of large scale foreign travel with your parents or, or, or with others over your life, if you've visited a number of different countries and continents and, and can talk about your experiences with that, that would be relevant and useful as well. Um, and any work experience you've got at home, so stuff you do for your parents, stuff you do uh, at home that is beyond the scope of um, sort of A-level study, that would be good. And there's a, another good example just under there. Uh, hobbies and interests often um, is something that people feel quite embarrassed about. So some of you will look at this and have loads of stuff to talk about, a wealth of stuff, as in the example at the bottom. But some people come to me embarrassed and say that actually they don't do anything. And, and that's not true. Even if you are somebody who does primarily online gaming, um, that is still relevant. Um, a, a lot of professions um, actively seek people who've done online gaming because the communication you do through the, the headsets with people is exactly the kind of skills that they need for people who coordinate in their office. So even if you're doing things like online gaming, at any kind of level, that is something you do and is worth talking to. It shows certain skills. Uh, obviously, sports is an obvious one. Um, if it's from years ago, you know, if you used to play football until you were about 13, then, you know, unless that was at a, a really good level, that's probably not that relevant, okay? And certainly if you weren't with a team. But if it's something reasonably uh, recent, the more recent, the more relevant is, is, is how it is. If you, did, so if you did something that was really skillful when you were younger, such as ballet or gymnastics at a good level, um, then obviously you might want to put that. But you know, if you play, if you used to kick kick a football around a little bit when you were twelve, and you haven't done for a few years, maybe that's not as relevant. Um, but if it's reasonably recent, go with it. Any kind of sports you do um, currently, um, even if it's just for your own fitness. Um, and remember, those those sports um, show real skills. So if it's an individual sport like tennis, there's there's real individual skills there that you're showing your ability to be self-reliant your ability to motivate yourself but if it's a team sport um it's not just about learning teamwork it's about learning and being used to other people relying on you to perform in any team sports or any team of anything other people rely on you to perform to your best and if you don't you know you've let them down and that is the key skill that you're looking at there, okay? Any finished physical accomplishments at all, if you're a climber, a swimmer, or anything like that, put it in. If you're part of any group, such as the Scouts, uh, Army, Navy cadets, it goes down very, very well. Things like St. John's Ambulance. Any kind of groups like that, no matter how unusual, please put it in. It will make you more interesting. It shows you to be a proactive person who seeks out opportunities and interaction. Um, sometimes your part-time job can be relevant as well. Um, it depends what it is. If it's just a, a, an ordinary shop job, maybe not. But sometimes if you're working in a restaurant, the pressure of that can be quite useful. Um, if you're learning a language or teaching language to other people, that can be really useful as well. Now remember, you must not copy any part of any personal statement you find. Okay, the algorithms of UCAS are really, really, um, really, really sensitive to that. And that includes the examples I've included in this PowerPoint. You must not copy any sentences. Please make sure that your personal statement is true as well, because if you are interviewed at a university, the likelihood is your interviewer will have your personal statement in front of them and will question you on it. So you need to be able to remember that what you put 
because you will be very embarrassed if they bring things up and you haven't. If they bring up an author that you say you've read and you can't even remember you wrote it, that is going to be embarrassing. So remember that. And remember to personalise it to your subject. If you're applying for an English literature degree, talk primarily about the books that you've enjoyed. OK, if you're talk, uh, applying for a history degree, it's about arguments. If you're applying for an engineering degree, you're trying to show your natural uh, instincts for engineering. If you're applying for computer science, you need to demonstrate your interest in it outside of the computer science A-level stuff you've done outside of school. Now, the ending doesn't need to be long. OK, uh, very often the endings of these personal statements is a line if that, because you are running out of words by that point. So everything that is important to say, you will have already said, okay, primarily. If you're running out of words, don't worry, because, you know, a, a, just a couple of sentences starting with to conclude will do perfectly fine. You just need to summarise your key strengths, state that you think you'd be a really strong candidate if you've got a little bit more words to play with it's a good time to talk about your future ambitions and, and universities like students who have got ambitions and know where they're going to go so if there's any specific areas of your subject that you want to have a career in in the future that is a really good time to talk about it in that very last paragraph and sometimes that that final ending can be the how i want to change the world paragraph so what you need to do now is work on these. I'm hoping that most of you have made a start uh, from last week's PowerPoint on the beginning of it. You must make sure as well that you've signed up to Unifrog. Far too many people haven't done that yet. So please make sure you signed up to Unifrog because your teachers are now writing references for you and they can't do that if you haven't signed up to Unifrog. And please also explore the Kudos platform as well, which we launched a couple of weeks ago. Um, your username and your email address, uh, your username is your email address and your password is password with a capital P. Okay, thank you everyone.